Hi and welcome back to the Gem Hawks YouTube channel. Today I'm going to be showing you how to make a complete miniature project. This utilises a short length of spike weave so if you followed the instructional video spike weave part one and part two and you have a length of spike weave available to use or you're familiar with the technique then we will be using a section of five little mountains worth of spike weave and that is in your 0.6mm gauge wire. We'll also be using a small section of one millimeter gauge wire for the coil. The design is the miniature spike coil pendant. You can call it something much more catchy if you want. I couldn't really think of anything so there you go that's what it's called. And we'll just show you what it looks like. So that's what we're going to be creating. It's really lovely as a charm, really lovely as a pendant, be perfect as earrings as well. So it's a great way if you've worked on some spike weave and you feel like you've mastered it and you've got these little sections of spike weave available to use, then it's a brilliant way of using them up. So if you pop down to the board, what I'm going to do is show you very, very briefly how to create the first section of the spike weave. This is what we are looking for. So we're looking for two wraps around the base wire and then five sections of mountains with four wraps in between, two wraps at the end. I will just run through the process with you very, very quickly. Uh, but if you feel that you need a refresher or you're completely new to spike weave, then do please watch the spike weave video first up. So the tools that I'm going to be using today are fairly standard. They are my bent chain nose pliers and my flush cutting pliers and I've also got some short lengths of wire these are 1.25 millimeter gauge raw copper wire I refer to them as rods or base wires um, they've been used for about three three and a half years now to create this weave and the more you use the raw copper the harder it becomes and they are a, a little bit more like rods the reason I use wire rather than a steel rod is because you have the flexibility to move the ends open and closed a little bit if that makes your life easier so to begin with, I'm going to pick one of these rods and I'm going to designate it my base wire. And I'm just going to wrap twice around the end. Now I'm trying to be thrifty with my wire at the moment, so I'm just going to take that end and draw it all the way around so that we've got two lovely neat wraps to begin with. Just making sure that that's completely smooth before we continue any further. That looks nice and neat and tidy. So give that a bit of a squish. So that's my base wire to start with. And... If I refer to this as the base wire, we're going to bring in rod or wire number two. We're going to wrap twice around this piece. You see there is an element of flexibility still in these uh, cores or these rods. So I'm going to go all the way around base and two twice, draw up at the back, introduce the third rod. And now I'm going to go around three and two. Boom, like so. Get that nice and tight into position. Repeat. And then all the way up at the back, you can give that a bit of a push over with your pliers just to get a nice tight uh, little uh, weave going on there. And I'm going to drop in the fourth rod now. Like I say, because you're working with wire rather than actual steel rods, you do have the flexibility to move that around a bit. So we're going to wrap around now rod number three and rod number four. We're going to do that twice before returning back down the other side of the mountain. I'll show you like so. So we've wrapped around three and four. Give that a squeeze over. And I'm going to draw the wire around rod number three and then up through between three and four down over the top again you can push that over to get that nice tight weave give it a squeeze and then we're going to come back down exactly as we went up by wrapping around two and three like so two times push that into position draw the wire up between two and three and then we're going to wrap around base and two open that up like so and a bit of a squeeze, repeat, oops I almost went for a third time then, give that a bit of a push and then we're going to come up between the base wire and number two to wrap four times around just the base wire, so that's three and four. Now whenever I get to the end of a mountain I just like to get that all nice and pushed up and over Give that a squeeze, give that a squeeze, and then crush down to set the shape of the spike. What I would do is repeat that so I have got five mountains. There'll be four wraps of just the base wire between each of them. 
and then on each end there are two wraps. Please do refer to the other instructional videos and you'll see how to create the weave, how to keep the weave neat and also how to remove it safely from the rods without making it go all squonky. So this is what you will end up with following the uh, detailed information on the spike weave tutorial. You've got a lovely section. It will be slightly coiled when it comes off so you can just straighten that out very, very gently to get that under a little bit more control. The next thing that we're going to create is a coil section onto which you can put your spike weave to generate that lovely little pendant or earring or charm design. So I've got a short section here of your one millimeter gauge. This is antique bronze. It's what I had in the scrap pot. It is always worth keeping those bits of wire to hand. You never know when you're going to need one. So I'm just going to put some warmth through this section of scrap wire like so. I'm going to pop in with my round nose pliers and start to generate a coil of this approximate proportion. So I'm going to come as close as I can to the end of those pliers, those round nose pliers, and start generating quite a tight centre to my coil before allowing that to start opening out. And the antique bronze really shines quite nicely in this light. So you can see that there is a completed circle in the center, but then it starts to helter skelter away and there's an element of space. So with this design, what I decided I would do is to create a nice open coil. And if I go too far and I make too large a coil, you can always undo a bit. If you don't make enough and you put the spike weave on, it's a little bit harder to then create more coil. So I think what I've got here is probably a little bit more than I actually need, which is absolutely fine. I do have a tutorial based on how to create the perfect coil. Do feel free to return back to that if you feel that this doesn't give you enough information. So I've got my coil now in antique bronze or I could choose the uh, rose gold colour, it doesn't really matter. But I'm going to show you with this one because I've just created it, making sure that you've got your section of spike weave the correct way up. So you can see here that we've got four, two, 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 four. If you flip it over, you'll see that you've got threes on one side and ones and twos on the other side. And it, it's pretty, but it's not what we're looking for. So I'm going to then thread the end of my coil through where the base wire was. And you can see, because we work with a rod that's 1.25 mil, and we're now working here uh, with a one millimeter gauge, it's really easy to just push that on. It's very, very pleasing when that comes into position. So I'm just going to pull that around until it sits where I think those two end sections are going to meet and look aesthetically pleasing, possibly a little bit further around. Bent chain nose pliers or any fine tip pliers. And then I'm going to cause that to come up at an angle like so. And then get that to straighten out by just feeding it through any flat facing pliers so that you have that little straight segment. And just push that a little bit further around than it's going to finish up. And then we're going to draw that section at the top down so that it sits just behind the top there. Can be a little bit fiddly if you are warm. So I'm just going to grip hold of that and push it so that it sits down so that those two end sections sit reasonably closely together. If you want to take the time, you can, of course, get those uh, wound up with a section of perhaps 0.4 millimeter gauge wire in the same color or a contrasting color and just tie that together. You could also hammer the coil once you have decided that the size is correct. So what the, all that leads us to do really is to put a little wrapped loop on the top. So I'm going to grip just above where the pendant is, uh, where the neck is created. I'm going to come forwards at 90 degrees like so. You could use your bail making pliers, you could use a round form. I'm just going to show you very, very quickly with the base of my round nose pliers how to generate a little bail. And I'm imagining that this would be smaller for earrings or for a charm, possibly larger if you were planning on using it for a pendant. Give that form a squash and then take the tail all the way around the little neck section that we created. There we go. Draw that back to the front and get that coil on your wrapped loop, super firm and neat and tidy. Now you can just wrap around if you want to, but what I think we might do today, because we've got contrasting color wire, take the scrap out of the way, come back in with the round nose pliers, and I'm just gonna put another little coil on the front there to join it all together quite nicely. Now, 
what I want to do is to have the coil coming down over the face of the pendant, but it's going to be quite tricky for me to do that with the pendant in the way. So I'm going to show you a little trick now, which is to create your coil coming in a different angle. So I'm just going to bring it away and forwards from the pendant. Let's get that started. So we've got a coil going on there. That was my wrist, sorry about that. Switch to the flat facing pliers and you can see that at the moment that's coming away from the front of the pendant. So we're just going to continue to create that coil until it sits approximately over the front where I want it to sit. And then I'm going to use my flat facing pliers and just draw that down over the front so that you get a, like a double spiral effect. Your alternative is there. Obviously you can wire that together, you can hammer your coil, you can use the same coloured wire, you can mess around with the position of the coil if you want to just to get that a little bit tidier. Or you could just trim off as I did in the original piece. So that's a really lovely mini make. It's a great way of using up segments of a uh, spike weave if you've made them, you don't know what to do with them. It's a great way of using up little ends of reels. It doesn't actually take very much wire to create a five peak segment of spike weave. Certainly doesn't take very much wire to create that little coil that we looked at. I hope you found it helpful and useful. If you've enjoyed the video, please do press like and subscribe. I look forward to coming back to you again very, very soon. Have a beautiful day. Bye for now.